So this is a uh, smart grid uh, uh, lesson from the real world webinar series. And this first topic is how your smart grid strategy affects your workforce. Now you could call it the uh, starting point or the point of departure or the primary focus, but uh, uh, you'll see understanding that point of departure and your desired outcomes is critical to your talent and organizational decisions. So here to take us through this first topic are Susan Christensen. She's a partner at Accenture. She leads the talent and organization performance practice area for North America Utilities. And her specialties include change management, talent management, and organization design. And equally important, she's worked with clients such as BC Hydro, Constellation Energy, Duke Energy, TXU, and many others. Bernie Budznowski runs his own consulting shop. He's got 30 years of operational and regulatory experience in the utility industry. He's directed many projects, including a large-scale AMI deployment, and he's on the board of the Utilimetrics Trade Association. They're both very experienced, and we're fortunate to have him on board. Susan, if you'd get us started. Great. Thanks, Jesse, very much for the introduction. And um, let, let me just, I guess, start off by covering in the next few minutes what, what uh, Bernie and I will really basically talk about. And, and there are three things. One is we've, we thought it would be important to set some context for different types of, I'll call them smart programs, or really, you know, some have called them smart metering programs, some are smart grid, some have taken on different names. but how have we seen them shape out? And so Bernie will uh, talk about that, and then we'll cover on if that's the focus of your particular initiative, the program you have underway, what are the key differentiators? What are the key things you really need to get right based upon what we've now experienced having worked with a variety of different uh, utilities undertaking these uh, initiatives? And then ultimately, what does that mean to the organization? So we've seen different kinds of um, changes based upon those strategies uh, and how that plays out. And we thought we'd share some of our insights based upon our experiences and then uh, obviously turn it over uh, to question. So I guess with that, Bernie, you want to walk us through uh, the next few slides on context setting? Sure, Sue. Thank you. Uh, I think one of my roles today is to uh, try and characterize the scope of the, uh, or the potential for change uh, in AMI smart grid uh, projects. And I, I had the good fortune to spend uh, almost 30 years in the utility industry, and, and the last 10 or 11 directly involved in uh, implementing business solutions. And it's kind of interesting that every time we rolled out a new solution, re regardless of what it was, a new CIS platform, a, a new work management platform, a new organization, we always characterize it as the same way. It's going to be business transformational, and, and we really mean it this time. Um, interesting, in my experience, it's AMI smart grid platforms that, that most closely um, represent uh, the potential to truly transform um, uh, a utility organization. But to understand how the business will be transformed, you've got to understand why you're taking a particular course of action. It, it, it may seem to be a statement of the obvious, but before investing or engaging in something as complex and extensive as a smart grid um, solution, you've got to understand what problems you're trying to solve, what business objectives you're trying to meet. And utilities have gone to the smart grid AMI trough for a number of, of different reasons, or sometimes related reason, reasons. Hopefully all of them are grounded in a, a, a case study based on additional efficiencies in, in the meter to cash operations. Um, in the last couple of years, there have been a, a number of uh, regulatory drivers. And, and they're typically utilities also have some strategic objectives in mind. And if we look on, at the first swim lane um, on, on the slide on the screen now, uh, utilities have often started uh, uh, with a smart grid implementation in terms of their um, vision of, of a smart grid. And, and one reason for starting here is the um, ability to capture low-hanging fruit in terms of uh, uh, initial benefits associated with automating the uh, uh, meter to cash operations and uh, the opportunity to leverage uh, interval data beyond, beyond the billing stream. The second swim lane uh, represents another potential 
uh, starting point. And, and it also represents or addresses a, a vision of what smart grid, grid really represents, a tightly integrated grid from endpoints to generating sources based on advanced communications uh, and real-time data transport. The end result being a more efficient, reliable, secure system with greater capability to respond to events and changes in the uh, supply uh, demand equation. And of course, both are based on, both the smart meter uh, solution and a smart grid solution are based on, uh, operate around the principle of a communication network um, communicating real time or near real time with multiple endpoints uh, or devices. The final swim lane goes beyond implementation of an infrastructure and it addresses how I integrate that solution into my business. Um, in the 80s there was a lot of discussions in the early 90s about what's going to be the portal to the home. At that time the focus in the literature uh, was around what route they would take to the home, fiber, cable, landlines. Few were certainly thinking the meter but I think in fact the last few years have actualized the potential of the meter to be the customer portal. That fact in itself suggests a host of business strategy questions, among them who will own the portal. Regardless of ownership, what will the utilities role be in supporting it? What will be the relationship of third-party providers, particularly third-party providers of new products and services? Does the utility intend to participate in the products and service value chain? And the, if so, does the utility have the right organization and skill sets to participate um, in, in the value proposition? So if we can go to the next slide. 